Hurricane Otis explosively intensifies near Mexico on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for October 25th. Well, we've had one storm after another trying to outdo each other with Lola becoming a major followed by Tej, Hamoun and now Otis reaching category 4 status near the coast of Mexico and a very dangerous landfall threat that has emerged extremely quickly throughout the course of today. But first the Atlantic where we have Hurricane Tammy which is strengthening again moving through category 1 status. Nothing else in the Atlantic though. Day 147 of hurricane season we've had 19 tropical storms so far. In the Eastern Pacific then of course we've got Otis which is a very powerful hurricane and hurricane warnings in effect and serious implications now for the coast of Guerrero, Mexico. Two other areas of interest that we were giving 30% chances to, the one following in Otis's footsteps could become quite strong as well. In the Western Pacific we've got a 10% area of interest still out there as well, low chances of development and no real signs of it so far. And Tropical Storm Hamoon, which is really on its way out very quickly indeed, made landfall earlier on uh, along the coast of Bangladesh, just south of Cox's Bazaar, and uh, was still quite a powerful cyclone at that point as well, but it is rapidly deteriorating. You can also see some clouds associated with the remnants of Tej there over the Arabian Peninsula. In the southern hemisphere, Cyclone Lola is passing through Vanuatu at this time, still a strong Category 2 on the Sappho Simpson scale, and it's going to be weakening gradually and quite quickly actually as it moves towards New Caledonia. So first of all, Otis, which is the top story right now, a hurricane warning from Punta Maldonado westwards to Zihuantanejo. It's currently 125 kilometers from Barra Vieja, 146 from Acapulco, 221 from Chilpancingo inland, 305 from Zihuantanejo and 377 from Lazaro Cadenas. A tropical storm warning and a hurricane watch are also in effect for surrounding areas. And that's the current position of the storm very close to land and it will probably make landfall within the next 12 hours. Well here's Tammy, it's quite far away from land areas now, you can't see any on the map. It's 928 kilometers from Bermuda, 1060 from Coburn Town on the Turks and Caicos Islands, 1621 from Nassau in the, the Bahamas, 1812 from Cape Hatteras and 2033 from Nantucket. General position is well to the northeast of the Lesser Antilles by this point and is likely to swivel round towards the west later on and reach Bermuda probably as an extratropical storm. Here's Lola at this time literally making landfall on one of those islands. It's just 4 kilometers from Litz Litz, 21 from Rogombo, 72 from Luganville, 202 from the capital Port Villa and 691 for Noumea. Cyclone warnings in effect for large parts of the central Vanuatu Islands and a cyclone watch for almost all of New Caledonia, extending as far eastwards as its capital, Noumea. So, a gradually weakening storm, but certainly still powerful at this time. Well, a lot to mull over. Let's take a look at the latest satellite imagery of a really well-developed hurricane that's continuing to wrap up and produce very high cloud tops. There's the visible, sort of visible imagery switching over onto the geocolor infrared. There's the late visibles of the day, raw uh, visible imagery here. And you can see in those last frames, really looking very powerful. Here's NOAA star imagery. We're not using our usual imagery sources tonight because uh, it's out of date and not keeping up to date at the moment. This is from NOAA star and you can take a look at the storm really progressing well. Not huge looking at its size, uh, but still very ferocious and very powerful core developed 
uh, microwave imagery proves that as well and this looks like it's going to completely the bottom's falling off uh, falling out of the eye right now and the eye temperature is rapidly warming here's tammy which is also looking better in the more recent frames here on satellite imagery and could be making a run for category 2 status this wasn't completely unexpected it, it, it was expected to intensify a little bit by this point probably due to baroclinic forcing moving towards the northeast and eventually it will lose its battle and turn post-tropical could still be quite strong as it does so but for the time being tammy is enjoying good conditions and this is lola right now it's really lost its structure but still holding on to some impressive winds most likely uh, moving through the islands of vanuatu where i imagine there's a lot of rain falling particularly on the southern side of the storm's eye as we expected uh, a few days ago Sea surface temperatures look good where um, Otis is right now, above 30 degrees Celsius along that coast of Mexico. Uh, in several other places though it is starting to decline. The Atlantic also looking good for Tammy for a little bit longer, temperatures there 28 degrees plus. In the Caribbean though that's still a real hot spot, well above 30 degrees Celsius and it's not too late for late season activity over there. But elsewhere in the Atlantic, things are starting to cool down. Gulf Stream, though, still providing a little bit of heat there. Western Pacific looking good in those lower latitudes as well. The deep tropics in the Philippine Sea. Yep, they look good above 30 degrees in a few spots. And also in a large part of the South China Sea. Still decent enough for tropical cyclone at Genesis. In the North Indian Ocean, well, both of those storms are gone now, but the, there is still plenty of energy left there. The Bay of Bengal and the Arabian Sea, all completely warm enough for another tropical cyclone or two. Southwest Indian Ocean warming up nicely as well off the coast of Madagascar, both sides now, and getting very close to the Masarene Islands at 26 degree isotherm. Gulf of Carpentaria really filling in with warm 28 degree Celsius waters, and off the coast of Western Australia looking good. And around Vanuatu, those temperatures are around 27 to 28, uh, but as you can see, Lola will really fall into much cooler waters shortly in the next 24 hours. Looking at the ocean, uh, the compared to average temperatures the anomalies north indian ocean looking decent compared to average western pacific also generally above eastern pacific as well is fairly above average apart from one or two cold spots in the atlantic also a similar story there where tammy is only one or two degrees above normal south pacific is actually a little bit below average which means that lola will weaken more quickly due to that Oceanic heat content is still looking exceptional in parts of the Atlantic Ocean, uh, particularly in the uh, Caribbean Sea. If any storm ends up there, then it's got a lot of potential. Eastern Pacific, one or two spots. Unfortunately, one of those is literally underneath Otis. And the uh, Western Pacific also has a few good spots there as well, mainly off the Philippines to the east. Wow, well let's check the models then, the GFS, first of all looking at Tammy and its forecast, strengthening there and widening of that wind field before it hooks round towards the west and around there loses its tropicality and turns post-tropical but still has storm force winds as it moves on towards Bermuda and I expect that they will receive tropical storm force winds at this stage uh, towards the end of the week, into the weekend actually I would say. Uh, so, and it slows down as well when it gets there too. That's reflected on the National Hurricane Center's forecast cone. Uh, so, could have some strong winds for a while. There's Otis. Don't trust the models at this point because they've fallen hopelessly far behind. It's pretty straightforward though. It's going to make landfall as a very powerful storm, probably Category 4. But watch those second two systems there forming in behind that, left and right. The one on the left hand side is already present uh, and likely remains very weak and doesn't move very far but the eastern one follows pretty much in the path of Otis in its uh, later part of its track and becomes a hurricane in its own right within day five as well so that could be another significant one to watch out for. Lola there moving southwards and southwestwards towards New Caledonia skirting the island there and turning post-tropical becoming part of an extra tropical system that moves on to uh, affect New Zealand. Look closely once again, it's the southern side that's the strongest all the way through, uh, and then maybe the eastern side once it's grazing the coast of New Caledonia. That'll be more rain than wind by the time it gets down there, and then on towards New Zealand as it teams up with an extra tropical storm. 
Now this is a difficult one to look at as well because the rainfall expectations uh, are going to be higher than what's depicted on this model run but even after that you can see the second storm moving in and providing even more rainfall over this area so we're looking at a seven day total here from both storms uh, will probably be in excess of these numbers so 16 inches there along the coastline near where this storm might make landfall to the east of Acapulco and 14 inches a little bit further eastwards offshore it's 31 inches and uh, that's uh, so 16 inches that's 400 millimeters 31 inches that's nearly uh, 800 millimeters there um, and high amounts of water uh, high amounts of uh, rain at sea as well but inland too could be looking at some significant uh, rainfall amounts Longer range, what happens to Tammy then? Well, there it is, uh, it weakens and it's still going just about, and then maybe another system trying to form off to its east there and uh, stealing its space actually, and uh, Tammy dies off completely, and then maybe that second system, don't know whether that's a tropical storm or not, uh, but could that be another late season system that will bring us even closer to the dreaded auxiliary naming list uh, by the time we get to the early days of November, and we sure can't rule out any systems forming after that as well. Eastern Pacific, there's that second hurricane making landfall in a very similar place to this first one and then moving back out again, it does survive and then off towards the southwest. There's that other system still to its southwest as well, uh, but doesn't really do much and turns the other way in the end. So both of those systems, another pairing to watch out for, especially that one that follows in the footsteps of Otis. but. Let's try and take this one at a time. Otis is a massive storm to be tracking right now. And in the Western Pacific, are there hints of some activity in the medium range? Well, yes, as a matter of fact, in the very low latitude areas there, something starts to uh, get itself formed. And there it is, a system that starts to appear near the end of that 10 day period, heading towards the uh, Mariana Islands. Uh, more importantly, uh, Saipan, which was also hit by that previous storm. Um, and then Balavan of course and then moving on towards the west by the looks of things through that and maybe another system to its east. Scan the barcode and that will take you to the Force 13 merch store where we have all of our usual products and items as well as our full season and individual storm animations on request. We also have our still waiting for Hone t-shirts even though we've got stuff going on everywhere it's not there. Well, in the Silly Range, there's just one thing to look at tonight, and that is the Western Pacific. What happens with these two storms? Well, they do cause themselves a little bit of trouble, and that's quite a powerful typhoon making landfall in the Visayas region of the Philippines and moving straight through those islands and into the South China Sea. So that could be <coughs> a significant storm to be talking about there in the first and second week of November. Uh, but we've not got much consistency on this just yet, but we all know how common and those kinds of tracks are at this time of year so I'm sure we'll be watching that very closely. You can talk about all of this and more on our discord server discord.gg slash force 13 for tropical weather and general weather chat with thousands of members from around the world. Back to what was on this day and it was five years ago to the day that we had Typhoon U2 it was actually coming off its peak but it was still a category 5 on this day it made landfall on uh, Tinian and Saipan uh, as a very powerful category 5 storm with probably 185 190 mile per hour winds um, and that was in the evening late evening of the 24th and by the 25th it was moving out towards the west and was gradually weakening it would eventually make landfall in Luzon I think it was still a category 2 by that point if I remember correctly and of course we tracked the whole thing well, back to today and we are code red for obviously Otis category 4 and who knows how strong this one might get before it runs out of time. It doesn't have much time which is the good news. The next name in the Atlantic though is Vince, in the Eastern Pacific it's Pillar and in the Central Pacific it's still Hone. In the Western Pacific our next name now is Jellowat and in the North Indian Ocean it's Midhealy. 74 storms so far this year. I don't think we'll get to 92, but it's certainly been quality over quantity this year. 
And in the Australian region, the next name is Jasper. The Southwest Indian Ocean starts with Alvaro. And in the South Pacific, next up is Mal. That's all from tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow night.